Hello everyone, thanks for watching as ever. Um, the MathLib project was started in around 2017 and a whole lot of code was written before we realised how important documentation was. So here's, the, here's MathLib and if I go into SRC, uh, well let me just, let me show you an example of, let me show you an example of good documentation. Data, the periodic numbers, this is always the canonical, the canonical thing. Let's have a look at, let's have a look at periodic numbers dot lean. There you go. So Rob Lewis wrote the periodic numbers file in lean and he's kind of carefully, uh, he's got this nice module doc string at the top. So there's his module doc string there. Let's just copy it. Let's just copy the entire thing. Uh, but unfortunately, not all of MathLib is like this. And I think that maybe we could even see if we go into scripts and then what's in here? No lints.txt. Here's a file. Uh, this file is nearly 2000 lines long. And this file is a whole bunch of um, is a big list of all the things where the various linters are failing. And one of the linters that we have in MathLib uh, is the doc string linter. And basically every, let's find doc blame, the doc blame linter there. So there's 1,412 hits in this doc blame linter. And that's a way of saying that there's 1,412 things that should have, uh, that should be documented. You know, they should have doc strings, but they don't have doc strings. So this is something that you don't really need to be a, a, a complete whiz at lean to help with. This is something that, uh, I mean, basically James Arthur gave me this idea. He's, he pointed out that this was something that he would be easily capable of doing, which is certainly true. So let me go into SRC. Maybe I should choose ring theory, because that's my favorite thing. And what have we got in ring theory? There you go, there's a ring theory adjoin.lean, you see. And here's a great example uh, of something that's no longer acceptable. So let's start by, let me, let, me, let me show you what's going on here. Let me, I should probably also open, let me open data piadic to remind myself of what a brilliant doc string looks like. Data, uh, piadics, I don't know, whatever. Piadic norm.lean, that'll do there. Uh, so that's what they should look like, these uh, lean files. And this is what they do look like. So copyright, blah, 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 that's all fine. Authors Kenny Lau, that ends there. And then after that, we should have the imports. They can go here, well, there. And now here, uh, Every single file in MathLib, and here's a, you know, this is a non-example. Every single file in MathLib should have one of these next. That should explain what's actually going on in the file. So let's just, you know, there's yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. So there's, there's an example of what this thing should look like. Let's just copy that here. There. Uh, so all that we had, all that we had was this adjoining elements to form subalgebras. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put a module doc string on this file. So and let's let's lint it as well. Let's go down and see what the lint has to say. There. Uh, so the lint is currently thinking and do we have output? Where's the info view? Uh, do we have output? No, ah oh, we don't because Lean isn't running, so let's get lean running. Lean restart. Did that finish? Yes. Lean restart. Let's check visible files. And now let's see what the linter has to say. So this is the first file alphabetically in ring theory.lean. And so the linter is passing, which is great. So the only problem with this file, uh, the only problem with this file is that we don't have a good module doc string. Uh, so I'm going to write, you know, a brief a brief piece of documentation explaining uh, explaining what this file does. And of course, one issue is that I don't know what this file does. So let's read this file. A join dot lean. 
it has some universes. R and A are rings, so R is a commutative semi-ring and A is a semi-ring. I mean, fair enough. I could just think of R as a commutative ring and A as a ring. And then we have this adjoin. So what does adjoin do? Algebra dot adjoin. I see. So this makes. So is R, R? This is the point. So what's going on here is that A is an R algebra, which means that A and R are rings, and there's a map from R to A. R is commutative. And uh, A is an R algebra, and then we have this adjoin. So these are lemmas about adjoin, right? Uh, so adjoining elements. So why don't we just call this, you know, adjoining elements, uh, adjoining elements to form subalgebras. That looks like a reasonable uh, explanation of what's going on in this file. So let's have a look. So they join. So they prove that if S is a subset of A, then the R algebra generated by S contains S. Uh, and they say, fair enough, so these are just standard theorems. Uh, we're probably going to end up proving that a join is some kind of Galois insertion or something. A join mono, a join empty, a join expand. How is this? We should also check for yeah, we should check for the 100 character limit. This line here uh, indicates that uh, this is this is the line on the right indicating 100 characters. So a join X span, yeah, yeah, yeah. Commutative semi-ring, a join union, fair enough. Uh, a join, da, 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 a join singleton X range, yeah. You see, here's this lemma that says if we if we look at the R subalgebra of A spanned by one element X, then it's the image of um, the polynomial ring. You know, there's a map from the polynomial ring obtained by evaluating the polynomial variable at X. And this is a join as the image of this. A join union can be submodule. They're all theorems. A join int, a join. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Adjoin trans. If we adjoin some stuff and then we adjoin some more stuff, then it's the same as adjoining some stuff. Uh, oh no, this is this is a more interesting thing. What does this theorem say? Uh, this says if we adjoin S, the submodule of the sub of the submodule of S is finally generated, and the submodule so it's some statement about if something is finally generated as a submodule uh, and something else is finally generated as a submodule and something else is finally generated as a submodule. There you go. Da, 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 da. Oh, and now we have a definition. A subalgebra is finally generated if it can be aha uh -huh, obtained by. So this is a definition. So this is one of the things should be that should be. Uh, uh, adjoining elements, is, you know, this this file develops uh, develops the basic theory of adjoining uh, a set of elements uh, to a, a set of elements of algebras of subalgebras of an R algebra uh, generated by. A set of elements. There we go. That's what it is. And do we do we have any notation? I didn't see any notation. We found our first theorem. No, we found our first definition. So let's go to definitions. Uh, what's the definition we found? Where was it? Uh, it is. It was after this. Here it is, FG. Uh, FG. Let's copy this. Uh, so definitions F, FG. Uh, FG, let's leave it like this. This is fine. S subalgebra A. Uh, 
a, uh, a predicate saying that the subalgebra is finally generated uh, as an A algebra. I think that's what it said. Let's go back and check. Um, 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 um. Yes. And so now we have some theorems. Oh, we have an instance. I'm surprised that this instance this instance is a definition. Why did the linter not complain about that? All linting checks passed. They're very strange. So I thought that instances were supposed to have doc strings as well. Let's put a doc string anyway. What does this say? I've got an A algebra. I've got an R algebra map from A to B, and A is Noetherian. Aha! Uh -huh. The image, the image of a Noetherian. Uh, let's call it the range. Oh, the image, the image of a Noetherian, uh, of a Noetherian R algebra, under an R algebra map, is a Noetherian ring. There, uh, and that is it. Right, wonderful. So various facts about uh, this file. So what does it do? So there's no notation. Uh, there is that definition. So what should we tag it? A join uh, uh, algebras, whatever. Algebra, finally generated algebra. Is that a good tag? Finally generated algebra. There you go, that should help people to find their way around. And now is there anything we want to say? Uh, a join expand. So this is a basic API for a join. Uh, and then some theorems about finite generation. Right. Uh, a basic interface for a join is, established, is set up and uh, various results about finite, finitely generated. Finally generated what? Let's see, what did we see? We've got finally generated ring, but then did I see some finally generated modules? You see, look, these are modules. Uh, yeah. Uh, and various results about finitely generated uh, subalgebras and submodules are proved. There we go. So that's now, uh, this, this file now, needs, now meets the Mathlib standards for documentation because the linter, have I removed the lint? The, the linter is happy with everything and we have a module doc string. So now I'm gonna push these to Mathlib, right? So let's create a new branch. So ring theory, uh, ring theory doc strings. There we go. So there's the new branch I'm working on now. And we've done a join. Let's look at the next one, algebra operations. So again, you see this, this has problems, right? Uh, this should go, this should go down here. Uh, that should go there, that should go there. Multiplication and division of submodules of an algebra. So let's have a look at this file. Let's let's lint it as well. What does the linter think? Uh, the linter, so the linter is happy. So the only issue is, again, we don't have a module doc string. Multiplication divisions of submodules of an algebra. So what's going on in this file? Uh, one. So we have a submodule one. I wonder what that means. What's one? Is it the bottom one or the top one? Uh, it is the image T submodule RR. That's R. 
Yeah, this is, this should probably have a comment. So what is this? You see, I'm trying to figure out what this is. So that means I should, I should um, write a doc string. I'm quite surprised that the linter doesn't complain. Why doesn't the linter complain? All linting checks passed. Why does the linter not complain? Uh, you see, because we have, we're in submodule. Let's print submodule. Oops. Let's print submodule has one. There, so it is a definition and it doesn't have a dog string. So why doesn't the linter complain? I'm, I'm slightly confused, so here we go. So um, uh, let's, let's define it then. One submodule RA uh, What is this? Let's put this in quotes. One submodule RA is what? Um, so what's going on here? A is a module submodule.map of id ra that's the identity that's surely the identity morphism from r to a and we push forward yeah 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 it, it's the submodule uh, it's the submodule r of a uh, that's what it is great uh, one X map top, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the definition. One X span, so this is submodule span. So the submodule span by one, yes, yes, yes. One LE uh, has mul. Oh, so there we go. So this is more documentation. This is multiplication. Uh, so multiplication, multiplication of submodules, sub R modules of an R algebra. Uh, so defined to be, uh, defined to be the smallest multiplication of submodules of an R algebra. So M times N is the smallest uh, submodule of A uh, of an R algebra A. Uh, the submodule M cross N is the smallest submodule of is the smallest R submodule of A uh, containing uh, all the uh, containing the elements. M times N, so there we go. Uh, for M in M and M in N. There, I think that's a pretty reasonable explanation of what that instance is. And so maybe, and this is an important definition. So what definitions have we had here? We should make, we should, uh, uh, definitions. Definitions we have one, uh, one submodule R A uh, is the submodule, is the R submodule R of the R algebra A of the R algebra A. Uh, and then what do we just have? Multiplication. Uh, so, mul, should we call it mul? I don't know. Mul, whatever, multiplication, uh, multiply, uh, I don't know how to, hmm, what about has mul dot mul? What about has mul uh, submodule RA? What do you call it that? Multiplication. Uh, so here, um, let let A be an R algebra. Let R be a ring. Is it commutative? Yes, let A be a commutative 
a ring or semi ring and let a be in our algebra yeah da, 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 da. has has mul submodule r a this is multiplication uh of two of two um submodules sub of two submodules of of two sub r modules of a uh is defined to be uh, the smallest let's put stars here I think they like the stars there it is defined to be the smallest submodule containing uh, the submodules M and N of A it's defined to be the smallest submodule containing uh, containing all the products and then there. That sh it should be pretty clear what that means. So now, what is the point of this file? So there's the definition of the instance. Mul mem mul, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mul le, sure, sure, sure. Mul induction on. Span mul span, fair enough. Uh, Mul a sock, mul bot, bot mul one, mul mul one. Oh, bot, I suppose, is zero. I see one is r. Mul le mul la 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 la. So this is a big interface for multiplication. Ah, so here we go. Look, this is the key thing, isn't it? This is the key result. Submodules uh, of sub r modules of an R algebra form a semi ring. There. Uh, powers, that's the obvious thing. Span is a semi ring arm. Uh, that is a definition. Span is a set. So what set semi ring? Oh, I see. Oh, that's interesting. You can multiply, you can multiply sets together. So maybe span dot ring com is another definition, line one eight two. So where are our definitions? Uh, this thing here, oops. Span dot ring com. Uh, this says let's stick with colons. Can we space them all out like this? Is that a terrible thing to do? Span dot ring home. Uh, what does this say? The ring home morphism. Uh, the semi ring home morphism. Uh, from where did it go from and to? It was one line 182. From set semi ring. So that's from set A to submodule RA. Uh, from set A to submodule R A, uh, and what's that generated by? That's called span. Uh, so maybe this is span as a semi ring hom from set A to submodule A. So there we go, line one hundred eighty two. Uh, so we're developing more of an API for. Oh, well, here's an instance without a doc string. Semi module set. I see. So sub modules. Uh, sub modules are a a semi. R sub modules of the R algebra a. Uh, is that right? It's definitely an algebra, right? Yeah, it's an algebra. Uh, yes, we need multiplication. Uh, oh, I've missed one. Uh, Submodules of an R algebra A. This is sub R modules of an R algebra A uh, form a semi ring. 
there. Uh, sub R mod R sub modules of the R algebra A are what? They're a module over set A, believe it or not. And and then we just have small facts. The elements of R, so now, so we should multiplication uh, an interface for multiplication. I should explain mathematically what's going on. Multiplication of uh, sub R modules of an R algebra A is developed. There. Uh, are these the main definitions? I can put main definitions. Maybe this is not an important definition. Uh, main definitions is it's proved. It is proved that submodule R A is a semi ring. Uh, and also, a, it's an algebra, right? What was that? This is a semi ring. Their span is a semi ring Holm. I mean, if it's a semi ring Holm, then uh, then surely that means this is an algebra, and also an algebra over set A. Uh, over set. Over set A. Was it set A? Yeah, yeah. So this looks good. That's a semi ring, and now we've got more API, and and oh my goodness me, we've got division. I colon J. So this is all very well documented. Great, division I over J. Indeed, it's normally called that in a T. McDonald. Is called I colon J. Uh, division is so division is also has div submodule R A there. So I so I over J is defined to be the the A in A such that A times J is a subset of I. I would imagine, I'm assuming that's the definition, let's have a look. Uh, the I of J, or the X such that X blob J is a subset of I, is that what I wrote? Uh, yes, except I could put the bub maybe. Uh, I can go like that. So I have a J is defined to be this. There we go. Uh, and now what do they prove about division? Uh, nothing, or very little. An API is set up. So that is that uh, for multiplication and division. The main definitions, one is so what we'll R. Has mul, has div. It is proved an algebra over set A. I think that'll do. There we go. Uh, so I should start pushing these, right? So there. Uh, docs for a join and algebra operations. So module dots there. Uh, so now what? Uh, algebra tower. Oh, this ha this looks good. Algebra tower has a proper doc string. Uh, let's see what the linter says. Uh, hard luck with still compiling. I suppose I've edited these things. Right, let's restart later and then let's just wait for a second. I'll check the chat. Oh, there's some chat. Uh, the, oh, did I forget a full... Thanks, James. Did I forget a full stop? 
Oh. This rather annoyingly uh, is taking a while to compile. Uh, what is it? Ring theory, algebra tower. Let me see if I can persuade. I need to go quicker. Let's just switch this off for a second. Uh, apparently we've triggered a huge amount of recompiling. Oh, well, well, um, well, maybe I should not worry about this file yet because it doesn't really matter whether it compiles or not, right? Uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find things. Did I remove? Let's remove the lint there. Then we haven't done anything. Uh, algebra. Oh, that looks good as well. Uh, algebraic. That looks good. Co prime, co prime looks good. I'm just checking with these module dot strings. Derivation looks good. Discrete valuation ring looks good. I wrote that one. Eisenstein criterion looks good. Oh, Euclidean domain does not look good. Uh, so let's sort this out. Uh, what are we doing here? What is this file? We're not sure. Uh, so it seems to know what a Euclidean domain is already. It's a theorem. It says, what does this say? The span of the GCD for a Euclidean domain, the span of the GCD of X and Y uh, is the span of X and Y. Why? This I'm a bit surprised about this because you would imagine uh, that this was true for um, this should be proof of principal ideal domains, really, right? Uh, maybe I should um, to I mean this is maybe I'll call this to do. This should surely be proved. Uh, for P PIDs instead. Uh, span GCD, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the got two elements of a Euclidean domain, then the 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 ideal generated by their GCD uh, is the same as the ideal generated by two of them. That's true for principal ideal domains. GCD is a unit if they're co prime. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. X divides Y or is co prime X Y and again that's got really so wait that's true for PIDs the GCD of X and Y is a unit if and only if they're co prime that's true for what's the definition of is co prime I wonder uh, let's go back to check invisible files do you think I can get to it quite quickly yeah here we go Oh, I can just hover. Is co prime the proposition that x and y co prime defined to be the existence of a and b? Yeah. So this is true. This is also true for a PID. Um, if x and y aren't both zero, what does this say? If x and y aren't both zero, and if for every non-unit but every non-zero non-unit, if it divides x, then it doesn't divide y. Then x and y are co-prime. That is true for UFDs, I would have thought. Then do we need? Oh, they're not both zero, I see. For all non-units. Is this not true? This is true for PIDs. This is true. It's not true for UFDs, interestingly enough, uh, because if X and Y, if you have a polynomial ring in two variables, uh, X and Y over the complexes, say, uh, 
then the GCD in the sense of unique factorization domains is one, right? Because they have no factors in common, but the ideal they generate isn't the whole thing. GCD is unit if. Is co prime means what? Aha, uh -huh, so this is also. This, uh, this should surely be proof of PIDs. Uh, this thing here, this, this should be proved for, for UFDs, surely. Uh, and now what's this one? If H is irreducible, then either it divides Y or it's co-prime to Y, and this should be proved for UFDs. Uh, there you go. So this is a rubbish, this is a really rubbish uh, file. So lemmas about about Euclidean domains. Uh, various lemmas about Euclidean domains are proved. All of them seem to be true more generally for principal ideal domains. So these lemmas should probably be uh, reproved in more generality and this file perhaps removed. There we go, that looks like a perfectly good doc stream for that one. Uh, oh, lean is working, let's see what the linter thinks of it. Is the linter happy? The linter is happy. Uh, great, so I think we can add this one to the pile. Uh, let's commit that one, module doc string module doc string for Euclidean domain. Wham. Uh, right, what's next? Fin type. Ha! Huh. Uh, well, I think the less said about that one, the better. So we about finite rings. Fair enough. Fractional ideal, this looks great. Freecom ring, this looks bad. Right, uh, free com ring. Uh, so what does this do? Free commutative rings. I don't know why. I don't know why they made all these files. Kenny made a lot of these. He did free abelian groups and free groups and things. Uh, free com ring. So this needs that says implementation notes, right? Implementation implementation notes uh, free com ring uh, free com ring alpha uh, alpha so what is this the free uh, the free the theory of the the free commutative ring generated by a type alpha there. Uh, maybe commutative. So what do you think that what do you think that means? Let's have a look at what this means. Multiplicative multiset alpha. So multiset alpha is all the monomials. It's the free abelian group generated by the... So this is just the polynomial ring over Z. Uh, this is isomorphic to the polynomial ring uh, over... The polynomial ring over Z. Uh, isomorphic to the polynomial ring over Z uh, with variables uh, in alpha. There, that's what it is. Implementation notes there is implemented uh, not using MB polynomial, multivariable polynomials, but directly uh, using free abelian groups. Uh, directly as the free abelian group uh, on multiset alpha there the type you know the the type of uh, monomials 
uh, in this in this free commutative ring. There we go. So now what goes on? Oh, this is a definition without. A, oh my goodness me! I bet this doesn't lint. Let's see what the lint has to say about this. It's having a think. Oh yeah, look, all sorts of complaints here. Great. So now we've really got work to do. This is good uh, because when this work is done, what will happen is that the uh, that file I showed you at the beginning. Yeah, what are we doing? We're missing. Definitions are missing doc strings. That's the only issue. Uh, but one, two, three, four, loads of them are. Right, let's see if we can let's see if we can fix these errors then. Let's read this file. How are we doing? This is the last one I'll do, I guess, because it's 10.2. Uh, so great. The free commutative ring is you see, I'm going to show you how to read a Mathlib file, right? Uh, I've never particularly engaged with this file before. Uh, so this should have, there you go, the free, uh, the structure of a commutative ring. Of a commutative ring uh, on the free, on the free com ring. Now that'll do. Uh, inhabited, there's no point documenting that. Now what? We've got these of, Chris was complaining about these of. Uh, oh, that's interesting. That's how you make multi sets. So that's the map from alpha to the free commutative ring. So the alpha to the you know the, to the variable. There's the induction. There's an induction procedure. That's how to prove things about the free commutative ring. If you prove it for minus one, you prove for all the variables. You prove it's close under addition multiplication. Then you have it. Uh, Lift, lift about alpha to alpha for a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, this is somehow the this is the universal property uh, to an additive group homomorphism. I see. This is right. Wonderful. So lift. So maybe lift is worth mentioning. Uh, let's document lift. Uh, main definitions. So maybe free com ring, maybe mention that one. Free com ring alpha, the free commutative ring on a type alpha. Uh, and now, what did we just find? Lift or something, where did it gone? Uh, lift, let's maybe not mention lift. So there's the interface for lift. There's lots of lemmas. Lift of a map. Ah, uh, oh, there it is. Lift hom. Lift hom. So what is beta? What is beta? Beta is a commutative ring. Great. Uh, so lift hom. Uh, lift hom. Alpha R, what's it called? Uh, I really don't want to call. I'm quite happy for Alpha to be a type, but I really don't think this is a bad notation, right? This is a commutative ring. Let's completely replace this. Uh, how many occurrences are there of this beta? Let's just no, let's not let's let's find out about beta. How many betas are in this file? Fifteen. So let's just have a, so it's a ring homomorphism. There it is. There. There's some more betas. Ah, oh, now we have to be careful. You see, they're not all rings. Yeah. So this beta is a, this beta is a perfectly good type. So I think we should call this R. But let's not go crazy. Variables R type V. Com ring R, F from alpha to R. Lift them up alpha to R to yada yada yada, great. So free com ring alpha to R. Uh, and there's the API for lift. And now lift of a map alpha to R. To da, 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 put that R there. Lift carry home. 
Yes. And lift comp of. Ooh, this has got an is ring home. That's deprecated. Uh, F of this should go to R. And we still have two errors. There's one here. That should be an R. And now there's no errors. Great. So this is lift. So lift home, this is important. Let's, so what does lift home? Lift home eats a function. Right, lift home eats a function from alpha to r. Uh, so lift home f from alpha to r. Uh, there, the ring homomorphism. The ring homomorphism from free com ring alpha uh, to uh, what's a ring homomorphism like that induced by. Uh, functoriality. Let's just put that. Uh, induced by functoriality from you know, a map of types. Of types. Just a map. Computer scientists know what a map is. Great. So that is that. And there's more API for this. Is supported. Aha. Oh, this is a definition. Oh, so I'm going to have to work out what this says. Is supported XS. I see. Uh, is supported. Is supported XS. In supported XS, it's going to mean uh, means that uh, all the monomials, all monomials showing up in X, uh, come from the set S, have variables uh, coming from S in S. That'll do. I'll put the full stop. To make James happy, there's the definition. Here's the API. It's supported, and here's another definition: restriction. Uh, so, what is this? What? Oh, I see. What do we throw away? Zero. Aha. Uh -huh. And the restriction map uh, from free com ring alpha to free com ring. S, where S is a subset of alpha, uh, S set alpha, uh, defined by sending all variables not in S to zero. Uh, and here is the definition. So maybe these things should be documented. Uh, map should probably be documented. If we do map. Uh, no, lift, lift on we did. Map I seem to have missed. What was map? Oh, that was this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I suppose we could mention it. Uh, what does it take? It takes F. Yeah. Uh, map. Map F from alpha to beta. Uh, the ring com. The ring com. Free com ring. Alpha to to bump bump free com ring beta there uh, induced by functoriality aren't they all induced by functoriality uh, from the map from F maybe I should put from F here. Uh, from F. Maybe I should sort these spaces out. Do we want spaces? Do you think this looks nicer? That looks kind of nice, doesn't it? Okay, that's good. Uh, now, what else have we got? Oh, we have an error. Do we have an error? Am I create? No, there's no error. Uh, restriction exists finite support. Now, what? Oh, here we go. 
free ring. Uh, I don't know what the free ring is. Oh, and it's got no documentation either. Go to definition, ring theory free ring. Aha, uh -huh, so this is a non-commutative ring. Yeah, fair enough. So the cano this is the canonical map uh, from the free ring being generated by alpha. Uh, to the free commutative ring generated by alpha. Uh, and that has gone too far, that has gone over that 100 lines, so I'll do that there. James will remind me to put the full stop. Uh, now, I want to wind down, really, because I've been doing this for an hour. Uh, the, ah, this is a canonical ring homomorphism, I should put. Ring homomorphism. There. And this is just the API for that. So what is going on here? Oh, if alpha has size one, if alpha has size at most one, then the natural map uh, from the free ring, from the free ring on alpha to the free commutative ring, to the free commutative ring on alpha, uh, is an isomorphism of rings. Lovely. And is that it? No, oh, no, there's one more. Uh, oh, there we go, there. The proof, the free commutative ring, free commutative ring on alpha is isomorphic uh, to the polynomial ring uh, over Z. Uh, generated by alpha with variables in alpha with variables in alpha there there we go there's a very long proof oh more so I should do these let's see how the lint is doing uh, this says the free the free commutative ring the free commutative ring on the empty set on the empty type is isomorphic to the integers. It is isomorphic to Z. Then what does this say? Uh, the free commutative ring, the free commutative ring on a type with one term is isomorphic to ZX. There we are. And now what does this say? Ah, oh, now this is free. I oh, know this is the same. These are even in the wrong file. Uh, I think. Oh, I see. There's, they're not in the wrong file because they're proved using stuff we have. The free ring on the empty type is isomorphic to Z. There. And this one. The free, com the free ring on a type with one term is isomorphic to Zx. And now the big moment... What does the linter say? Ah, oh, the linter is still not quite happy. Free com ring and free com ring off is all I'm missing. Free com ring, uh, which is here. Oh, I missed this one here. Free com ring alpha is the free commutative ring on the type alpha. There and of it didn't. Now, this is the, the other one I've missed. Uh, the canonical map uh, from alpha uh, to the free commutative ring to the free commutative ring on alpha. There, so now we can get rid of that. And now, the big moment what will the linter say? The linter says all linting checks passed. Uh, so now we can get rid of this 
lint at the bottom because we know the lint is passing. Uh, and now what, did it, what do we do in this file? Uh, that's it really. Uh, main definitions, main results, main results. Uh, the uh, free com ring is proved to be uh, to be functorial in various ways. Uh, free com ring. Uh, is that a ma can I do it like that? Free com ring alpha is. Uh, maybe it is not proved to be is functorial in various ways. Free com ring alpha is isomorphic to a polynomial ring. Right, that'll do. Uh, so I think that that is also ready. Free com ring also module docs and other doc strings for free com ring. I will commit all those things and then finally I will push this uh, there I will publish this branch and and now I'm going to go to github.com and I'm going to open a PR uh, for for I'm going to open a PR for this branch and it will probably be accepted with very little controversy and I will have I will have made the world a slightly better place Let's see how more we've got left. You see, look, we're still not remotely finished. But still, that's, that's, I mean, the reason I've done this is just to show people, A, how easy it is, and, uh, and B, you could do it too. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.